Okay. So what's my, you know, recently my father uh, got a diagnosis for Alzheimer's and uh, I've got a lot of, we've got this in the family, money, obsession around money and, uh, and all of that stuff. It's in, he's got it really strongly, I've got it really strongly, <clears throat> this thing around money and business and making money. Um, so he got, he's got Alzheimer's and obviously that was very triggering for me. But also what was very triggering for me is like, he's got properties and a BNB &B business. And, and there's also a history of hiring builders, giving them thousands of pounds and then ripping them off. I mean, he would just see a builder working on the, in the street from another property and say, hey, can you like work on our property? And the builder will see my 80, 84 year old father with a big beard and go, this guy's dumb. You know, so they'll just say, and so I need the roof fixed. And he'll go, like, I need thousands of pounds. I need thousands of pounds in advance. And he'll just give them the money with no, with no receipt. Or they'll, if they give a receipt, it'll be a false address. So he does things like that. And then he gets furious. Um, and then I have to try and mop up the problem. So those kinds of things happen. Or he'll run the B&B &B by himself. The last time he'd get, like, a tramp off the streets who will just sort of say... Uh, the money's coming next week, you know, and then we'll just smooth talk my father and my father will just go, oh, well, he's going to give the money next week. So he does these kinds of things which I get triggered by. <laughs> to, I think my ego's trying to get some sympathy, but anyway. So, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, so, so it's like, so, anyway, I've been doing, uh, so what's my practice? So, you know, so it's the thing of like, you know, so he's 86, and now he's getting Alzheimer's, so there's a fear in my ego of him making extreme, huge... I mean, he'll, you know, he'll get builders and offer 100,000. Uh, 100,000, you know, he's given 100,000 to builders who have not finished the work, and that's an ongoing thing. But anyway, so, um, <clears throat> so my ego gets really... And my, my ego's got a <clears throat> big thing around money, and my father making decisions around money, and also his current person. So I guess that there has been a history of my ego not liking some of the things that have happened in the past with this thing. So this was a big thing, and him trying to run the B&B, &B, and my thing was like trying to get the safe options done, and his thing is he wants his autonomy, and to be in charge of everything, and running it himself. So there is a battle between him and, and me, um, sort of things. One, I'm trying to encourage him to do safe options, and he wants to do his thing. So that was really, really triggering for me recently. So I've been doing about three or four hours of prayer, a day on it for like a few months. I mean, the miraculous has happened. I mean, he was like very exhausted, suddenly get a new lease of life. He now feels he's got enough energy to run the B&B, &B, which is quite also bringing up stuff. But so I'm getting three or four hours. I go, well, from A Course in Miracles, I've seen so many miracles happen. You know, God, God has not, it's like, yes, in the world of illusions, where I have an ego and others have an ego, we have like collective egos that collude with each other, you know, and in family patterns there can be family stuff. And you've got family who reflect, you know, karmic patterns, you know, ancestral karmic patterns, family karmic patterns. So this stuff is now coming up for me and I, I can see it's very, very big. You know, I want to control the situation, I want him to do the safe options, what I perceive as safe. He probably think, you know, he probably thinks he's doing you know, he wants his autonomy, he, he loves, you know, being in control, he loves hiring builders and making the deal, he likes seeing everything and making every part of every decision, he loves making money, you know, so, and he thinks he can make a lot of money, so, you know, he's got his views, I've got my views, so, I thought, well, you know, I have to, you know, of course the miracles is you have to, anything, you know, I've seen that, when, like, when I met Hawkins, it's like, you know, and my experiences, when I, you know, my illnesses were the biggest thing. I realized by putting, you know, saying, I cancel my belief in kidney failure. I'm an infinite being. God did not create kidney failure. It's not real. God did not create that. I did that every day for years, you know, because I was suffering so much from these illnesses. And it was like, suddenly when the energy, feel the feelings, the energy was gone and I couldn't think of them, they disappeared. You know, the, the, at the same time, the hospitals discharged me. They go, you haven't got a problem. And so my experience was, when it disappears, from my, there's no feeling, there's no thought, and it's almost like I'd, I've never experienced it. There's no problem at all. It's totally erased. My experience was then, uh, all the hospitals discharged me. 
you know, the miraculous happened. So I just know with this, now this situation that's come up, you know, feelings, sometimes very slight feelings come up, but more is the thinking, is this thought that comes up, what if he makes a crazy decision? You know, that comes up. And so what I've done, my prayer practice is, I've listed all the things that I think he could do that could trigger me. Like, you know, he could run the B&B, he could flood the place, he could make an insane decision. Um, I also love him. You know, I've placed his Alzheimer's, I've placed the side effects from his medication, I've placed, placed his aging, and that has been quite transformative. I'm not sure, intuitively, I think because I did so much on my illness, when I sort of pray, pray for someone who's got an illness, it's like, he, I mean, he's like, he's miraculously got a new lease of life. So I think I haven't cleared my money stuff as much. So I'm not, it's clearing a bit slower for him. I've seen his physical recovery be quite dramatic. But I also have some money stuff I've not cleared in me. So clearing his money stuff is much more slower. So I think God wants me at this moment. So, but, you know, this is the thing that's coming up for me. So it's like I have these prayer beads, which when my mother passed away. There's these, uh, you get these prayer beads so you can count. And I'm doing, uh, I used to be doing, you know, I'm doing, I have like a long list of things. Like I'll have about 10 or 15 or 20 items. And I'll be placing them, so we say, into God's infinite light. And I'll say, I place my, my father's psoriasis, my father's Alzheimer's, my father, side effects from his donazepril uh, medication. I place my fear he'll make an insane decision. I place my fear he won't allow a tenant. So I'll read out a list of about 15 items. And my intention as I do it is I'm placing all of these items into God's infinite light and love. But to save time, I'll do the huge, a huge list, maybe up to 15 items in one go. And I'll, I'll say it about 10 times in a row. And I'm counting my beads. Okay, that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four. And then I'll read my next list of items and I'll be placing them. And I'll, I'll be doing it uh, twice a day. <coughs> so I'll be on the tube and I'll be counting my beads. I don't really care you know, what people think of me. It doesn't really matter. I, mean, I can do my beads. I'll be in 12-step meetings counting my beads as well. You know, people would sort of, you know, and it doesn't really matter what people think. So, and I'm doing this throughout the day, morning and evening, with this huge list of items. I'm doing it for him. I'm doing some of my own personal stuff. Um, I'm also doing some stuff to, for my, myself in general around money, <coughs> you know, uh, uh, just my, my obsession with money. So I just do that. That is my, my thing. And, I, and the intention <coughs> behind it is, what I didn't know in my early days is the more you do it, you can clear things faster. Because in the early days, I would only do, I cast my belief in kidney failure like two or three times a day. And it took years to clear it. And then it came, I think, through the group that, no, if you want to get rid of something really fast, then you want to, like, do it all through the day. Because if I just say I cancel my belief in kidney failure once today, I'll have done some work to clear it. But what if I said that a hundred times today? What if I said it a hundred times every day? Then it's going to clear faster. No, that's the rationale. So that's, that's what I'm doing, really. I think through doing it and having the group thing, um, it's just to make it disappear and the energy of putting it into God's infinite light and love and praying for miracles and transcendence around it is very, very powerful. It's over and over and over again. And it's like that energy, that thought, as soon as you put it into God's infinite light and love, you disappear it. Does that make sense? It's, it disappears in the light of divinity. Or if you can't, if you don't, that's a tip. If you don't know what into infinite, God's infinite light and love, it should dis, it's like you dissolve it into the infinite and then you dissolve it again into the infinite and hopefully at the end of it it's hard to think of it you know it's hard to think of it or if it's still easy then you might want to do more repetitions so it's like your ego finds it hard to remember what the problem was does that make sense it's like oh do i really have a problem i can't think of it it just dissolves, dissolving it into the light okay